Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Minahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey now, today we're going to take a look at Cheng Wang, Guardian of the City from Big Fun. Now, this is a Taiwanese game, although the language for this particular copy of it is in Japanese, although like an ignorant clod during my overview, I refer to it as Chinese text, so I do apologize for that ahead of time. But what this game is, thematically, I think it's based off of some Asian folklore that I can't quite white grasp about there being like the this parade of sin and there's the night guardians who are the guardians of virtue and vice which the players are trying to dispense amongst themselves to deem someone guilty or not guilty i'm a little confused by it all but mechanically speaking this is a card drafting game you are dispersing these virtue and vice cards amongst yourselves in order to gain points through typical card drafting measures with some interesting twists, one of which being that you actually make a tableau of these cards that you draft, and then do a vote to see who has the most points, and then you have these special guardian powers that will uh, influence the game in dramatic ways. That sounds a bit confusing, but let me go ahead and give you a brief overview of how the game is played. I'll do my best to explain it, then we're going to come back, I'll let you know what I think. All right, a few things I need to mention up front. This game is purely in Chinese at this point in time, meaning that I had to refer to some English translated uh, rule books and reference sheets off to the side. So when I show you some of the cards, like the uh, the general cards, there's going to only be Chinese text on them. I'm just going to have to explain to you how they work. But you can download the English translations on Board Game Geek. The other thing is that the game actually comes with these little stands to put the general cards on. I don't use those. I, at least I think that's what they're for. I don't recommend using them either. I think they're just for show. The other thing I'll mention, and this is a, a positive thing really, is that the game has incredibly beautiful artwork. It really, really does. So I do want to sh showcase a little bit of that, but I also want to warn you that some of it is a little risque. Not that I think most people in my audience care, but just as a warning, like there's the, the real rule book. Uh, which you won't be using anyways because, again, it's only in Chinese. But <laughs> I just thought I would uh, to warn you of that particular piece of artwork. Now, really, Sheng Wang, Guardian of the City, is not a complicated game. It's actually a rather simple card drafting and bluffing game. But there are a few layers to the onion that have to be peeled back. So I was like thinking of the best way to describe how to play the game. And I figured I would start with the core concepts first and then work our way back to the more detailed stuff. Now, this is a competitive game for up to five players or six players. If you play the advanced game with more of the advanced guardian roles, then you can go up to six players. But uh, if you just play with the simple ones, which I'll explain first, then that's only going to go up to five players. And the core concept of the game is card drafting. You have this deck of cards. And by the way, as I explained in my intro, the theme is very thin, so I'm just going to ignore it for the most part. Um, you have these virtue and vice cards that are part of the main deck of cards. And they all have names like filial and burglary and things like that. I'm just going to refer to them by color. You'll have to forgive me for that. Um, so each of these cards are what you're going to be drafting uh, for the first, part, uh, the main phase of each round. And the game is going to be played over the course of four rounds of play. And whoever has the most points at the end of four rounds is going to be the winner. And those are the cards that are going to give you those points. So drafting is done in typical drafting fashion. Each player is going to be dealt out six cards from the main deck at the start of the game. You actually have a chart here that is going to uh, tell you, again, it's in Chinese, but you can still use it as a reference, uh, that is going to tell you how many cards of each color you're going to use in each game depending upon the number of players uh, so you'll work that out first then you're going to deal out the cards to each player you're going to take a card from your hands uh, put it face down in front of you and then pass the cards to your left and each player is going to do this simultaneously and you're going to keep doing this until you have a brand new hand of six cards once you have your new hand of six cards, you're going to take one of those cards of your choice and you're going to throw it face down back into the uh, remaining cards. Uh, I and that's a rule that I'm only 99% sure of because our English translator rules were a little bit foggy, but I believe the remaining cards plus whatever cards are discarded are going to be the discard pile. So you'll put that card face down there and then things are going to get a little more complicated, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Let me describe to you what these cards actually do and how you're going to score points based on them. Uh, so... First off, you have the purple cards here, which are only going to be straight up points. This will give you three points if you hold on to it to the end of the round and when you get to do the scoring. 
Same thing with the orange cards, four points. Red cards as well, those are going to be worth six points. The blue cards are a little more complicated. If you only have one blue card, you're going to get two points. If you get two blue cards in your uh, tableau, you're going to get 10 points. And if you get three of them, you're going to get 18 points. If you have four or more, they're worth no extra points. So it only behooves you to hold on to three. Uh, same thing with the green cards, but they're worth a, the spread's a bit higher and potentially lower. So let me scroll a little bit there. So if you only get one of them, you get zero. If you get two, you get six. But if you get all three, you get 21 points. Now, the gray cards are only worth their face value as well, which is two points. But whoever has the most gray cards during the end phase is going to be able to steal a card from another player. At this point, I will also mention that if there's ever a tie in the game, for instance, uh, when players are tied for the most burglary cards, whoever has the commander's paddle... I'll say, is going to break the tie, no matter what the situation of the tie is. At the beginning of the game, this is going to be random. Uh, at the For the rest of the game, however, at the start of the round, whoever had the least, uh, the lowest score in the previous round is going to take the paddle, we'll say. Okay, so that's the core of the game. Simple enough, right? And by the way, these are the scoring chips. You'll always keep your points face down as you gain them at the end of the round. But let's go back and add another layer to this onion. When you draft the cards, instead of just taking them into hand and then scoring the points on them, you're actually going to make a tableau out of them. So let's say that this is the five cards that I chose to draft. I'm going to put two cards face down in the back row of my tableau. The other three cards are going to go up like this. So I have three cards in the front, two cards in the back. Every player is going to do this. And then simultaneously, players are going to flip up their top three cards. In other words, every player is going to know what three of your cards are, but have no idea what your other two cards are. And this is before scoring. Now, at this point, there's a discussion. All the players at the table discuss who they believe has the most points, potentially. You see what players are holding. So this is kind of like a poker type thing in, in a sense. Uh, does it Texas hold them? I don't know. I get the terminology wrong. Uh, but you can see some of the cards, but you can't see all. So you're only guessing what you believe the other players have. But you want to try and figure out who you believe has the most. After some discussion, you can discuss as long as you want. Each player is going to, to vote. Now you have this little voting chip. Um, and simultaneously you're going to decide who you, and, and give it to the person you think has the most points. I recommend throwing it in the face of the person you think has the most points. But that's not for every group. You might just want to put it down in front of them simultaneously. Or you don't you just want to point. That's probably a better way to do it. Either way, you simultaneously vote. Whoever gets the most votes, again tiebreaker the commander gets to break the ties the commander's paddle whoever has the most votes is on the hot seat they have been accused of having the most points and they have two choices at this point if you've been accused of having the most points you can either decide to admit it and say again no one's cards have been flipped over at this point but you can say you know what I probably do have the most points. I have a green here. I have a blue here. I, you know, maybe you have another green and another blue. And in this case, I don't. But it might, you know what? I probably have the most points. I'll just admit it to avoid a harsher punishment. If you admit it, you flip over your cards. And then you have to get rid of two of your virtue and vice cards. But you have the choice over which ones you get rid of. So you might say, well, you know, it's kind of a wash at this point. I'll just get rid of this blue, which is only going to be worth two points to me anyways. And I'll just get rid of one of these sixes because what's the difference? Now, assuming you've admitted and assuming you make that choice, all players are going to flip over their face down cards. And then you're going to go straight to uh, the burglary event, which is remember, whoever has the most gray card showing gets to steal a card from someone else's tableau. Then you go to the scoring, take your point chips, keep them face down. That's it. You start a new round. However, let's go back. If you chose, let's say you were called out as the person who had the most uh, points, but you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't have the most points. There's no way. I'm going to deny my guilt. I know this isn't the right allotment, whatever. You say, I'm denying my guilt. I don't think that I have the most points. I'm going to challenge that. In that case, you go to a showdown. Every player then flips over all of the cards, and you see for sure who has the most points at that point. Now, if you were lying, whether you thought you were doing it purposefully or not, and you actually did have the most points, then you are punished, and you must get rid of your two virtue and vice cards, which give you the most points. 
All right, so in this case, it doesn't really matter. It would just be these two sixes would go bye-bye. But in other cases where you might have a set of three cards, that could really devastate you. Like, let's say I had three green cards and I had to get rid of two of them. That would really, really suck. Now, let's say the opposite happens and you were accused of having the most points but you and you denied your guilt and you really didn't have the most points when everyone flips over in the showdown. Then you get to look, not only do you get to keep all your cards, you get to look through the discard pile and choose a card of your choice to add to your tableau as compensation. It gets added together with all of your points because you were falsely accused. All right, so that right there is most of the game. You're going to do that four times. But let's add another layer to the onion and talk about the Knight Generals. The Knight Generals are powerful special ability cards that you're going to get randomly dealt out to you at the start of each round. If you're playing just the base game up to potentially five players, you're only going to use these five general cards. And these are have Chinese text, but I figured I'd show off the really great artwork anyways before I go into what the explanations are of what they do. So we'll go ahead and we'll start off with the orange card here. This one says that you only have to show two of your cards instead of three. So whereas everyone else has to show three front cards, you only have to show two. The other three are going to be in the back. And up in the top, it'll show you like what phase these things have to happen. This one is just neutral because it just happens. It's an automatic thing that you have. Uh, this card is a little bit tricky. This one, basically, you shut down one of your cards. So you'll flip one of your cards over, and then you're going to shove this underneath another card, and it will duplicate that card. So let's say I wasn't getting very many points for this blue card here, because I only had one of them. It was only going to get me two points. Um, I can go ahead and shove this underneath my green card, and it would mimic that card. So I would get another green card for that, which could be potentially a ton of points if used properly. Uh, let me focus this again. Uh, now, this happy-looking uh, <laughs> lady here, uh, she is going to give you one of two abilities. You choose which one you want to do. Either she's just going to give you three extra points at the end of the round, or which could be significant, or you may activate her ability in the chosen phase, and you get to, but this is before voting happens, and you get to look at two cards that someone else has face down, up to two cards. The number two card lets you, when you activate her ability, you get to draw two cards from the discard pile, look at them, choose one of them, and add it to your tableau face down. And then finally, you have the number one card, which says that when you activate her ability, you choose a card that is in your tableau, and you turn it horizontally. Every card of that type is going to be worth an additional five points for you. So if I thought I was going to have more red cards at the end, I would go ahead and turn this like so, and then I would have that uh, all reds for me are going to be worth five points. Now, again, these generals are going to be randomized and dealt out to each player at the beginning of each round. They're going to be flipped face up simultaneously so that everyone sees what special power every general has. Now, if you choose to play with the advanced rolls, uh, you get to use these other general cards which will be thrown into the mix. Uh, what this card says is that if you have killing cards, which are the red cards in your final tableau, they're going to be worth double points. Uh, then you have this cheerful looking lady, which says that you choose a player and every card that they own is going to be worth minus one point. And you will activate that when it gets time for the final showdown. Uh, then again, that's what these letters up in the top are going to mean. Uh, this one actually has to do with the burglary cards. You get to take all of the burglary cards from the discard pile into your tableau, uh, and this and it cannot be the target of a burglary. Uh, the, those cards cannot be the target of the burglary event. And then finally, you have this uh, again. I don't know the names of these. I'm sorry, but <laughs> she has to do with the uh, the faithfulness and filial cards. If uh, you hold those cards during the showdown, they are each worth plus one point uh, for your final scoring. So that is quite a lot of information, but essentially what this is, is a drafting game where you're tr with a little bit of bluffing, where you're trying to get the most points based on the cards you draft into your tableau, only showing some of them and using the special abilities of the Knight Generals to the greatest effect. Whew! That is Sheng Wang, Guardian of the City. Let's get to my final thoughts. This is one of the most interesting games I've played in quite a while. At its core, it's just a card drafting game. And there's a lot of card drafting games in my collection. And, you know, the core mechanism is the same in all of them. But the twists and turns that Sheng Wang takes are just really, really cool. 
and I really enjoyed my time that I uh, spent with it. First off, let's talk about that artwork. The game is just beautiful. As I mentioned in my intro, the story of the game is really weird. It's based off of some folklore I don't really understand, or maybe it is a fictitious, un fictitious universe. I just don't know that. Uh, but either way, the theme is not really connected to the mechanics that much. It's, it's just an abstract card drafting game. But at the very least, it looks fantastic while you are playing it. Yeah, some of the art is a little risque. I'm sure most people in my audience don't really care about that at all. For me, it just looks fantastic. And I doubt that this game will ever get reprinted over here with that artwork at least which is a shame because it's great and it's unique like so many other aspects of this game moving on to the mechanisms i mean the card drafting here is solid but the way that you use those cards which are relatively simple it's just these cards are worth points these cards you know if you get the set of them you get even more points yada 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 but putting them down into that tableau and having to reveal some of them and the whole thing with the voting and it just adds this level of bluffing and double bluffing that is really interesting because it's like, okay, I can put these cards up front and reveal them and be like, yeah, I, look, obviously I don't have that many points, but chances are the other players can be like, ah, you're hiding points back there. Or you can just go say, hey, look, I got one green card showing. Probably have a lot of points back here. Hope that people vote for you. And then turn out that you don't have that many points. And then you get to dig a card out of the discard pile. Any card that you want, which could be tremendously huge for you. So there's a lot of interesting aspects here. Like you could have two green cards. You could have one green card showing and only one green card back in your hidden cards. So people vote for you like, oh, he must have a set of green cards. But if you don't and you're able to dig for another green card, if, it's out of, if there is one that's out of play then you have just made a huge point gain. So I just love that aspect of it, that whole like suspicion and distrust. And you have that moment of discussion and going back and forth like, no, don't vote for me. There's no way I have that many points. Look what he has. And that never, in any of the games that I've played of it, that never went on too long. It seems like it would, like the haggling back and forth. But at a certain point, people are just like, nope, I'm voting, it's you. And so I found that very, very interesting. It's a nice little twist to the otherwise dry card drafting mechanisms. The guardian powers are also really cool because they influence the game in pretty dramatic ways. And they make everyone feel a little bit different from round to round. And they're always passing around so everyone has a chance uh, at a, a go at them. I will say, if I was going to say a complaint about the game, it would be about the guardians. And that's that they are unbalanced. I mean... Having the one that lets you look at two cards that someone controls is huge. That is immensely powerful. Or having one, the one that says that uh, each card of a certain type is worth plus five points or the, the points for your red cards are doubled. Those are just immensely powerful compared to, oh, this one lets you add one more card to your tableau or this one just lets you uh, keep more cards hidden than the other players. Well, those cards, while they could provide interesting elements for bluffing and for getting more points, eventually are also making you a huge target. And I just, and I also ones like the being able to grab more burglary cards out of the discard pile. Again, those burglary cards might already be in play. You just may not have them. So it's selectively useful. I do wish the Guardians were a bit more balanced, but you don't even have to play with all the Guardians if you don't want to. I think that even with the basic five Guardians and at a five player game, it's still very interesting. Now that's another thing too, is that even though I think the game plays very well with three players, I also think that it plays better with more players. I played a five player game of this and again, while I liked both experiences, I felt the five player game was better. I felt that it just had more interaction, more voting, more suspicion going back and forth. One thing about it, no matter which player count we played at, the point spread was surprisingly close. I mean, sometimes it was like, eh, you know, 10 to 15 points, something like that. But it was still within, you know, within shot. I mean, no one felt like they were too far behind. Because again, the mechanisms of the game are relatively simple. The interesting aspects of it, the complexity and the strategy comes from the interaction between the players and the back and forth and the bluffing, which just comes with time. And with, even if you're not great at it, sometimes you just get a good hand of cards. And so that's why the points totals can stay relatively close. While at the same time, if you are really good at this game, I feel like you will crush other people because you'll know better about which cards to hold on to, which ones to keep into reserve, which ones to hide and to make the best use of your special abilities, unless you get stuck with one of the bum ones. So overall, really solid game. I hope this gets picked up for wider release. 
even if it doesn't keep that amazing artwork, although I hope that it does, because this is an incredible, well, okay, incredible is probably an exaggeration, but it's a really, really good card drafting game, and that's a genre of card games that I really enjoy. I think it's a mechanism that needs to be in more games, especially if it's used in innovative ways like this. That is Sheng Huang, Guardian of the City from Big Fun. Check it out if you can. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.